Starter. Ignition. Pressurize. She's lit. Exhaust duct okay, Jerry. is the J57 turbojet engine. Its specifications are, of course, restricted. Designed by Pratt & Whitney, it's one of the most powerful production engines known. In the air, it drives with a thrust of over 20,000 horsepower, more powerful than 100 modern motor cars. The J57 is built in the world's largest factory, the aircraft engine division of the Ford Motor Company in Chicago. But people are working on this engine all over America. In Indianapolis. Louisville. Toledo. Cleveland and Boston. Men and machines are at work to produce parts for the J-57. More than a million of them in thousands of plants are contributing their skills for the defense of the free world. Day by day, materials roll into the receiving docks at Chicago. Rough forgings from Canton, Ohio are unloaded and stockpiled away. These are the Thunder Makers, the men and machines that build the J-57. Here, the center shaft is set. And it begins to take form. This lathe bites off a quarter inch of tough steel alloy. Later, the shaft will be smoothed and polished like the jewel in your watch. Other hands remeasure and regauge the finished parts that come from suppliers across the country. This is a compressor disc that may have traveled a thousand miles. Every part, every bearing must be checked and rechecked against rigid engine specifications. This girl is wearing invisible gloves. 
a protective cream which prevents perspiration from damaging bearing surfaces. Before our engine is complete, over 100,000 checking and testing operations will have taken place. Our center shaft requires 12 boring operations just to shape its internal contour. This part is called a front compressor rotor hub. It's hard to say and harder to make. And only the gauges and instruments can be sure. These turbine blades on a broaching machine are nicknamed buckets. When the operator completes the machining, he measures them to a ten-thousandth of an inch. Machining. And inspecting. Cycle after cycle. This technique is typical of aircraft engine production, where each part is tested at each stage to make sure of perfection. Magnesium and titanium are tricky metals to handle. They're machined in a separate air-conditioned area. These jig bores work so accurately that fine adjustments are made with microscope sights. The machines are mounted in rubber floats to insulate them from factory vibrations. pilot nor a flight engineer, but he might as well be. He's testing fuel flow at a simulated altitude of 45,000 feet. Fuel can do strange things to pumps and manifolds eight miles up. Use dry ice to bring fuel down to 65 degrees below, and you test parts under realistic flying conditions. But inspection would be worthless without isolation and protection of the perfect parts and components which are stored here under Air Force bond to await final assembly. In the final assembly area, inspection is continued, even to the size of dust particles in the air. Protective air conditioning filters out all particles more than 1 40th as large as the head of a pin. Air conditioning also maintains the constant temperature and humidity necessary to precision final assembly. Aircraft engine production is not new to Ford, but this is a new kind of engine, the most complicated aircraft power plant in the world. This is mass production but mass production with the ultimate in precision. Here on the sub-assembly lines, the engine begins to take form. Piece by piece, parts are put together. Fuel lines and pumps are added. In flight, you'll burn a tank car of fuel at a time with the most power per gallon of fuel of any production jet engine. Sub-assembled parts are tested, like these compressor rotors, dynamically balanced while revolving at high speed. Final assembly begins here, where the giant engine is tipped over into its cradle. 
steady now. This is over 4,000 pounds of delicate mechanism. Over 12,000 separate precision parts. Swing on the power package. The afterburner that gives our pilots the extra kick for maximum speed. Connect the lines and cables and add the test gear. Back to the test cell. All engines go through the same assembly sequence. Build, test, disassemble, inspect, rebuild, retest. Machines are the Thundermakers. Today, if you look quickly, you may see a J-57 hurling a fighter through the sky. Or a B-52 bomber. And tomorrow, you may race the sun coast to coast in a giant airliner powered by man-made thunder.